The Father seeks those out who worship him. The creator of the universes and everything that ever was and is and always will be is looking for someone to worship him in truth and spirit. And people say they're waiting on God and looking for God. When God is trying to get access to us. But he doesn't approach a prideful heart. He doesn't approach arrogance. He doesn't approach sin. He exposes it. But he approaches those who are humble, who are true seekers, who are wanting to know him more and are willing to worship him, whether they know him or not. See, through worship, you begin to know him. Because there's an exchange, your presence for his presence. And as you begin to know his presence, it's not about knowledge, it's about relationship. Because his presence is what brings relationship. So you can have all the knowledge in the world and have head relationship. But never heart relationship. Because see, true relationship is with the heart, not with the head. And so many are trying to have a relationship with God in their mind. Our relationship with him is in his presence. In his presence. That's why when we lack his presence, we go to the head. Our own head. Our own reasoning. Our own common sense. Our carnal understanding. Instead of going to the heart to access his presence. Again, we are in a time right now, in the, and you've heard this before, that God is raising up headless warriors because they don't live out of the head. They live out of the spirit, the heart. They're seekers of his righteousness. They're not concerned about fame or fortune. They're not concerned about anything else, but that they're pleasers of God. They don't want to bring shame to his name at all. And they're very sensitive to conviction. In fact, they'll convict themselves because they don't want anything to interfere at all. Nothing to interfere with this relationship of purity and honor, of respect to the one who was, who is, and who always will be. Listen, we were nothing. He thought us and spoke us in. Think about that. Other than that, we were just nothing. Until he thought us and spoke us in. Out of all of the cells that could have been produced to have birth, you and I were chosen. And then we were chosen again with an invitation to say, come on, I got a new born again experience for you. I've sent you into this world through the process of sin, but now I'm going to take you out to the process of righteousness. So the process of righteousness and justice is constant. In fact, the throne room says, there's a label, it says no entrance without righteousness and justice. Amen? Amen. So we are in a time right now that is just, it is perilous times. It's pressing times. And it's heavy duty influence times. That's why it is God's pleasure that we are sanctified. Sanctified is the area to where we are set apart. It doesn't mean that we just go home and lock yourself in the house and, you know, not associate because that's what the enemy likes he doesn't want us to fellowship and that's what the word says forsake not to assemble because he doesn't want us to fellowship people that are separated usually get quite beat up in revelation chapter 22 and verse 1 
And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, and either side of the river was a tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant, and of your brethren, the prophets, and those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Do you know how much false religion is out there where people are actually worshiping angels? And the angels that allow them to be worshipped are fallen angels. Verse 10. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is what? It's at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteousness still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters. Whoever loves and practices a lie. Whoever loves and practices a lie. That's pretty intense. Because there are many who are practicing a lie. In verse 17, or 16. And I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. What does he send him to the churches, his body? Because the body doesn't understand so much of what's going on out there. There's a lack of understanding. There's a lack of what is God's time and season and where we are right now. In verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come, and let him who thirsts come, and whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Again, by partaking into the tree of life, we become Trees of righteousness. Amen? <laughs> By practicing righteousness, we become holy. There's no halo. Amen? The purpose of becoming holy is because you are conducting and expressing the character of Christ 
which makes you holy. Holy is an area to where we are sanctified, untouched by the world. That's what's a representation of holiness. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, The word says that you will know them by their what? Fruit. In representation of a tree that bears fruit. So when you really look at what God was saying, you can certainly get more of the interpretation of what was really happening in the garden. In verse 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be what? Soon shaken where? In mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one what? Deceive you by any means that that day will come unless the what? Falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. How many all know that we are in the falling away? In fact, we are more than three quarters of the way through. Does everybody get it? But it's going to escalate much, much more. Verse 4. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We know this is associated with Lucifer. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his what? Own time. Who is restraining then? We are. The body of Christ is restraining. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So that means that you and I at some time will be removed from this planet. Hallelujah. Preferably sooner than later, but God's got a plan. In verse 8, and then the lawless one will be what? Revealed when? When we are removed. Does everybody understand that? Whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all what? Unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now grab hold of this. He says, this is going to be unrighteous deception. Unrighteous deception. I mean, the falling away will continue to increase and division will continue to escalate between those that have pleasure in unrighteousness and those that have pleasure in righteousness. But they are deceived. They are blinded. They have been taken captive. They are under what we call mind control. And verse 11. For this reason, God will send them what? Strong delusion. In other words, they will get worse. They will have an opportunity to turn. And that opportunity will always be there. But if they choose not to grab hold of the return opportunity they will fall into great delusion. That they should believe the lie. He's going to allow them to believe the lie. That they all may be what? Condemned who do not believe the what? The truth, but had pleasure where? In unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through what? sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth again that's separation from the presence of evil to which he called you by your 
by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. Again, the falling away is... Con we are in the escalating part of the falling away. We are actually seeing so much exposure of the pleasure of unrighteousness. We are watching them who are being called out, exposed in false lies, what they call false media, and the organization of Satan's media. you got to understand that. This is Satan's media. This is his outstretched hand through all organizations to continue to promote and exalt a lie. Now, they will make excuses because they've been caught. They will continue in their lies. And as they continue in their lies, God will release more delusion to them where they will begin to believe their own lie until their heart is broken or they choose to turn. Is everybody okay? In 1 Timothy chapter 4, So they are trees of unrighteousness, which is called wicked. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Is everybody there? In verse 1. Now the Spirit does what? Expressly says. So it's like somebody jumping on a table going, Yo! Can I get your attention? Maybe ringing a bell. I don't know. Something. Maybe some people's bells need to be rung, but anyways. Now the Spirit expressly says that in their latter times. Are we in the latter times? Some will depart from the faith. Is that the falling away? Yes. Giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Wow, do you know? Who's the promoter of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons? Satan. And what does he use to promote it? The media. He uses education. Look at the medical field. Did, I don't know if you know or not, now the kids have to have a vaccination. Isn't that incredible that they are passing a law? That children cannot go to school without a vaccination. I hope everybody takes their kids out of school. Starts homeschooling them where they learn the truth because they're not getting nothing but stinking lies there anyways. Eventually kids will believe one plus one equals three. And it ain't working that way. Because God is a great mathematician. <laughs> Hallelujah. They'll be giving, taking heed to Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, they won't, they'll be so hard-hearted that they can't receive conviction. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So many will depart or fall away from following let me explain something. I said they will fall away from following, but still claim to be believers. See, not believing, because <laughs> they're not following, they're not believing, and they're turning to the tree of deception. And that tree of deception is associated with good and evil. So they will tell themselves that they're a good person. They are convinced that they are good people. You know, the word tells us in the latter days, many will can be convinced that they were going, they're good people and killing for God. But they will be servants of darkness. Amen? So these individuals that are eating from the tree of deception of good and evil, and, and, and they are away from the tree of life, which produces righteousness. All political parties have a belief system. 
All governments have a belief system. So that means behind their belief system is some kind of doctrine. Amen? Which is either influenced by God or the devil, one or the other. We are continually watching the promotion of the falling away, which will give Lucifer access to the temple of lawlessness as the false god. Remember, until we are taken out, but it says that the falling away must first take its position. So we are, again, more than three quarters of, a way, of the way of the falling away. Is everybody okay? Isaiah 14. Trees of righteousness. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Oh, happy days. <laughs> Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How you are falling from heaven, O Lucifer, Son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground who weaken the nations. Now, wait a minute. Do you cut down a building? No. Do you cut down a car? What do you cut down? A tree. Hello, do you see symbolically? He's calling them the tree which was in the garden. Amen. How you are cut down. And he wasn't mocking him. He was telling me, you are cut down. Verse 13. And he says, you who weaken the nations. Why? Through his media, through his influence, through his doctrines. For you have said in your heart, what? I will what? I will ascend into where? Heaven. Can you imagine telling God this? I will exalt my, my throne above the stars of God. <laughs> What a moron. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. Talk about pride and arrogance. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like who? The most high. I'm surprised everyone in heaven didn't duck. <laughs> Verse 15, but the Lord is so cool. He, he responds. Oh, really? You shall be brought down to hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. That's all he had to say. Then he says, those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, is this the man who made the earth what? Tremble, who caused wars and nuclear wars, who caused mankind to kill one another, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a what? Wilderness. And destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, all of them, sleep in glory, everyone in his own house. But you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch. Like a garment of those who are slain, thrust through with the sword. Who go down to the stones of the pit, like a corpse trodden underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The broad of evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his what? Now remember, his children are associated with demons. Does everybody get that? Because remember the fallen angels, Lucifer's family, family. <laughs> Satan and the fallen angels went into women, produced offsprings, which were called Nephilim. When those Nephilims died, their bodies, they became, those, their spirits became demons. That's why they need a body. So he calls them their children. In fact, if you read in the book of Enoch, one of the things that the angels that knew they blew it were begging Enoch to intercede for him, for them. They called them the watchers. 
And as Enoch interceded for them, the Lord sent message and said, no, you have left your eternal position. I will not forgive you. Because you took women and you acted like people of the earth. And because you decided to become earthly instead of eternal, you will be bound until the day of judgment. And that's where they are now. All the fallen angels that put on flesh and went into women are bound. And they still are bound. So no angel can put on flesh without the permission of the Lord. Or he goes bound also. Amen? So he says in verse 21, prepare slaughter for his children because the iniquity of their fathers. Now let me ask you this. You and I were also born as children, offsprings of Satan. Amen? It says that you and I were born in sin. But God has stretched out his hand through Christ Jesus to say, listen, here's an opportunity to be born again. You get another turn. You get another chance to come out of this and not be judged with those who refuse a new birth. Because those that refuse the new birth are still children of Satan. Amen? Amen. Prepare slaughter for his children because of the iniquity of their fathers. They will rise up and possess the land and will fill the face of the world with what? Cities. Cities. Isn't that what Nimrod did? Amen. And it's still continuing now. So God destroyed the children, their children once in the flood. Amen. And he will destroy them again, but it won't be by flood. It'll be by fire completely. But it'll also be by famine and pestilence and you know, certain things, disasters and earthquakes and certain floods. I mean, you see the tsunamis and things that are going on around all over the world. I don't know if you know or not, but we've had more flood water in this world in the last year than we've had in multiple years. Places that are being flooded that would never be expected to be flooded. People are dying left and right. Amen? Is everybody okay? So again, he calls, he says, you're going to be cut down like a tree. <laughs> Which he was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? That deceives the world and produces offspring. Lucifer was removed for his pride and arrogance to be like God. It wasn't the area of just being like God. He said, I wanted to be God. He said, I'm going to be God. I'm going to be better than the God that they have now. And this is what many false doctrines are promoting. They promote against the true Christ of rescue and enslave individuals with false hope, sin, lawlessness, unrighteousness, lust, addiction, and everything else that can prevent an individual from relationship with Christ Jesus. Again, the word tells us that they have a form of godliness and deny the power of God, that many will fall away in this time. These false religions, again, these false religions are just not from coming from preachers. That's just a minute part of it. It's coming from media, music. Look at the religion of music. Think about that and how it affects the world. Of course, Lucifer was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He knows how to infiltrate the emotion. He knows how to infiltrate the soul of an individual and bring bondage. You know that all the music of the world, I didn't say Christian music, because the Christian music is anointed by Christ, but all the rest of the music is anointed by the devil. They pray over it. They take their music and they put it in what they call culverns, and these occult places and witches pray over them. And they conjure up demons to be attached to these songs so that when people listen to these songs, they invite demons in them and don't even know it. And these are testimonies of individuals that have been famous in the music industry and see it and know it. And it's been going on for years. Look at how music affected us before we were saved. 
And look at what if you go by and you hear a song that's from your past, it kind of brings remembrance. Amen? Just don't, don't start dancing to it or singing it. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Again, that was one of the first things that uh, I walked away from was the music. Then all of these uh, things that I had in, that were associated from my past partying life, those all were removed. Anything associated with my past except for what brought glory to God is the only thing that was kept. But you and I, you and I have that choice. And, and if you're really in, is seeking a relationship with the Lord, he's going to tell you, look at man, this is, this is an open door. That's what you call a cursed items. A cursed items open door to demonic activity. But let me tell you, it's amazing how many, I've gone into so many believers' homes, especially to proclaim to be believers, and we're going to go give an estimate for construction or whatever. And they have all of these things in there that are cursed items or jewelry on, or clothes on that are cursed items. I remember I was at an event one day, and this dude was walking around proclaiming to be a Christian. He had this big skull on his T-shirt. I found he couldn't handle it any longer. I walked up to him, and I said, do you believe in life and death? He said, yes. I said, then why are you promoting death? He said, what do you mean? I said, that skull on your shirt is promoting death. I said, do you want to get rid of it? He said, yes. I took his, he took his shirt off and I gave him another one. You know, people don't get it. They think skull and crossbones are cool. You know what they put skull and crossbones on? Poison. I mean, think about this. Why? Because it promotes death, not life. I see these guys go to these Christian events and these dudes are pulling up with motorcycles with skull and crossbones on them. I'm like, what the snap? They're out there tattooing one another at these events. Are you a Christian? Yeah. Where? What, what, what universe? <laughs> Not present day one, that's for sure. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Do not what? Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hello. That's simple enough. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So everything's going to pass away, even the lust of the world. So those that are still associated with the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life are going to pass away with it. Amen? But those that are abiding and doing the will of God will escape it. Why? Because they produce righteousness and they were considered trees of life or trees of uh, righteousness because they eat of the tree of life. Is everybody okay? Verse 17, or verse 18. Little children, it's what? It's what? It's the last hour, and you have her. It's last call. Hello. It's the last call for salvation. <laughs> it is, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come by which... We know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing. The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty is the anointing. From the Holy One, and you know what? You know all things. That doesn't mean that we're Mr. and Mrs. Know-it-all. Amen? But we know the things that please God. We know the things that are acceptable and not acceptable. We know the things that are righteousness and wicked, 
holy and unholy. Does everybody get it? Many believers have taken their lives back and, and call themselves believers. Why? Because we were to give our lives to Christ. Now they've taken their life back. And they say that they're believers, but they don't follow, and they become self-centered, prideful, with lust for sinful pleasure, money, material, fame, denying the character of Christ instead of denying self. I'm going to say that again. They fall in the place of denying the character of Christ instead of denying themselves, which the Lord says we must deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow if we want to be his disciple. By denying self opens the door to the anointing, the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty. But not denying ourself opens us to the door of darkness and deception. Again, it's the anointing that's on our life that allows me and you to become a tree of righteousness. Because you and I can't do it. The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty that we feed off of, as we partake, we are now producing fruit. And it's called the fruit of the Spirit. To where we become trees of righteousness. Now, the enemy wants to come and cut you down. Amen? Or he wants to plant corruptible seed so that you produce corruptible fruit. Isaiah 61. Everyone say, this teaching is for me. The way the enemy can't tell you it's for your neighbor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is a, of God is what? Upon. Upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. To do what? Preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom and liberty to those who have been taken captive to the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be what? Called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified and they shall what they're going to rebuild the old ruins they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair the ruined cities and the desolations of many generations strangers so shall stand and feed your flock the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers you but you shall be named the what priests of the lord they shall call you the servants of God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Uh, does everybody see what's happening? This is happening now. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth. I will make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the prosperity whom the Lord has blessed. Wow. That we are the prosperity, trees of righteousness, priests of the Lord, servants of God, with double honor, double prosperity. It's all ours. Everything is ours. It's a matter of getting in position. It's a matter of getting connected. 
so that everything can flow. Because see, a light doesn't come on until it gets plugged in. Amen? When there's the plug-in, there's power, but there's got to be a switch that turns it on. That's called free will. Free will. So God has already given us the measure of faith with power to choose to worship, to choose to deny self, to choose to follow or not to choose. Ezekiel 3. In verse 16. Oh, happy days. Ezekiel 3, 16. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Now it came to pass at the end of seven days. How many of y'all know seven means complete and perfect? That the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from the, his wicked way. To save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Why? Because they weren't warned. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you did not give him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he has done shall not be what? Shall not be remembered. I want you to understand that when somebody breaks covenant with the Lord as a believer, everything that has been stored up with them in heaven is removed. Because that's what it says, his righteousness will not be remembered. Righteousness is producing treasures in heaven. So everything that a person does when they break covenant, everything they've done is removed. Is everybody okay? You get this. But thank God they're not going to hell. God gives them another opportunity to rebuild again, if they're willing to. Amen? Again, his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. Also, you will have delivered your soul. Is that powerful or what? This is reality. God is warning the righteous right now to maintain righteousness. Amen? The wicked are not expressing the Christ character. They're not expressing Christ's character or fulfilling their vows. Again, they say they're believers, but they're still expressing the old man and not the new man because they're not really followers. Romans 1. Conviction is warning. Amen? Chastisement is warning when God chastens us. Judgment is warning. All of that is warning. Wrath is the end. To fall under his wrath is over. Romans 1, verse 18. Let's speak it together, please. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. For I consider that the suffering of this present time, I guess I'm in the wrong place. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's try it again. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all what? Ungodliness and unrighteousness of which... Men who suppress the truth in, whoa, un, with, in unrighteousness. 
Again, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. Of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Are we seeing that now? See, the ones that have fallen away are still promoting unrighteousness. They're still living in the doctrine of demons because they have been taken captive. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the, of, since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are what? Without excuse. So there is no excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as a God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God to an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, let's go a little further. For this reason, God gave them up to what? Vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which is due, which is death. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteousness judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of what? Death. Now, here's the other part. Those who practice those things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also those who approve of such things are deserving of death. Now think about that. Approve of those who practice that. Think about how many believers have voted and promoted an individual that got in office that was a promoter of abortion, same-sex marriage, and all the other wickedness. And when a believer so-called, see, again, these are not believers because they're not followers. Does everybody get it? They have no idea that they are going to wake up in a place that ain't cool. Literally. It just ain't cool there. Many good people practice and promote evil agendas and the belief systems that promote hell and not heaven because they're deceived. 1 John chapter 1. First John chapter 1 and verse 5. Let's speak it together. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So there is no gray area. Amen. So many people believe that they're on the fence. Amen. They got to remember that the devil owns the fence. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we what? 
we lie and do not practice the truth. Now think about that. Think about how many people are out there who call themselves believers. They say they have fellowship with him, but they practice darkness. In other words, their fruits are not fruits of righteousness or they're promoting things that are not of God's pleasing. He calls them liars. He says, and they don't practice the truth. But if we walk in the light... As he is in the light, we have what? Fellowship with one another, and the blood of Christ is activated in our lives. In other words, it is alive and working. His son cleanses us from all sin. Again, the blood of Christ is alive in those that practice righteousness. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Next chapter, uh, third. 1 John 3. Little children, let no one what? Deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous, and he who sins is of the what? The devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why you and I are born again also, so that we may continue in that ministry of destroying the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Look at those who are connected do not sin. It doesn't mean that they don't have temptations. They don't allow sin to rain on them. It doesn't mean they won't make a mistake, but they don't allow it to maintain because the blood of Christ is maintaining, still activated because they're producing righteousness. So the blood of Christ knows when offense comes. Amen? And it speaks. How many of you know the blood speaks? Even Jesus said the blood speaks. That's where the God's, God's presence is. Remember, the blood always goes before the presence. So the presence and the blood are together. Always together. So in that, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. Because he was brought so that the blood and the presence could come. That way we have the truth. We have the power, the strength, the anointing. To break all yokes of bondage, to walk in freedom, to overcome any circumstance, to reject sin, to reject temptations, to say no to lies, and to expose them. We are without excuse. Amen? No blame. Where there's blame, there's shame. Amen? Oh, snap it. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Verse 3, I think. No. Verse 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been what? Born of God. That's a, born, a state of being born again again. 2 Timothy 3. Let's speak it together, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Sounds like the Democratic Party having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people do what? Turn away. Whoa. <laughs> For this sort of those that creep into households, ministries, businesses, and make captives of gullible men and women, load them down with sins, and lead them away with various lusts, they're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth because their learning is carnal. They have great wisdom, but no good for eternal life. 
Now Janus and Jabez resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of what? Corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to be at Antioch and Icaeum and Lystrum. What persecutions I endured, and, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. But yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will do what? Suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse and worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must, everyone say I must, continue in the things which have, I've learned and have been assured of knowing from the, whom you were lear you've learned them and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be completely, thoroughly equipped for every good work, so that they may be trees of righteousness. Amen? And bear fruit according to the ways of the Lord. Remember, everything right now is Christ's character. Producing Christ's character. Producing Christ's character. Producing Christ's character. As we produce Christ's character, your atmosphere changes. Everywhere you go changes. The powers of darkness must back away from the presence of God. Does everybody get it? They can throw fiery darts, but they can't step in it. You might smell flesh. <laughs> and it isn't a, you know, a cookout. But praise God. Maintain your connection. Maintain being filled. Maintain as a worshiper. Maintain as a God pleaser and not a man pleaser. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed today that's been imparted grow and bear fruit for your glory. And we ask, Lord, that you'll keep us connected to you.